Hello. I'm going to give a presentation of a plasma ball, modified plasma ball, being used as a delivery device in conjunction with the Spooky 2 function generator. The plasma ball will generate an electric field that is both detectable by the tri-field meter that I'm going to be showing. The sensor is at the top of this tri-field meter where I'm pointing now, and that's why I'm going to be having it aimed at the plasma ball when the uh, uh, demonstration is in progress. I have an oscilloscope here that has two channels. The lower channel right now is acting as it's connected to this probe right here. And this probe is in the grips of a alligator clip and a little staging. And it's just sitting up in the air with its top off acting as an antenna receiver. It's going to receive the electric field and display the electric field um, pulses on channel 2. Channel 1 is going to be um, an output from channel one of the function generator. Function generator has two channels. Function generator is capable of less than one hertz to about five megahertz. That's its frequency range. And it generates square, triangular, sawtooth, sine waves. And those uh, sawtooths can be either leading edge or trailing edge. I'm going to be using a square wave to drive the circuitry, the modified circuitry in this plasma ball and I'll be driving the uh, uh, plasma ball with a 25% duty cycle square wave, just in case I forget to mention it. All right, first thing I'd like to do is to connect the plasma ball up, and it consists of a couple of ports, power port, and a hardwired connector. And this is the trigger port. I'm going to plug the trigger port into channel one of the spooky. Now, channel one has another connection. I've got a T on here, and it's going to the probe that's going to channel one of the scope. So we'll be able to see all the pulses that the uh, spooky function generator uh, creates or generates. Power supply is provided by one half amp 5 volt. I'll plug it in. Connect it up to the plasma ball and turn the plasma ball on. Now this function generator isn't turned on right yet so we're not seeing anything coming out of the plasma ball and the antenna probe isn't receiving anything. So we're going to turn the function generator on next. It's going through an initialization stage and it's going to fire up and a couple of things have happened. One is, is that on channel one you're seeing these pulses that are 25 percent duty cycle and they are coming at 200 hertz. That's 200 cycles per second. The plasma ball responds very effectively between 200 and 40 kilohertz. Um, you can run lower but the lower you get, the less intense the electric field generated by the plasma is. I use 200 sort of as a practical limit. And when I'm running under software, I have uh, there's some parameters in software that you can set to uh, force it to run a harmonic if you want to get below 200 hertz, or force it to run a harmonic if you want to get above uh, 35, 40 kilohertz. On channel 2, you see these spikes, and I don't know how well you can see them. I'm going to turn the lights off just momentarily. And you can see these spikes on the, um, and they're corresponding to the trailing edge of the um, 200 hertz, 25% duty cycle uh, pulses. And the plasma ball is glowing. Now, you know, I know you can't see it because the plasma has a color that the camera does not pick up that well. I can see it just fine. But if I put my hand in back of it, 
you, you can see these, they're sort of an orange. In fact, I'm going to turn off this flashlight here that I was using. And you can see, you can see some orange plasma hits, basically, hitting the glass and sort of reflecting off my hand. My hand is actually sort of attracting the plasma. It's actually creating Birkeling currents that are streaming to the contact points of my hand. Now, as I go up in frequency, you're going to see this plasma ball start singing, just getting really, really. Um, not loud, but um, flashing. The reason why I put this uh, flashlight here is that I want to show the meter. And I haven't turned the meter on yet. And I'm going to turn the lights back on momentarily. I'm going to blow the screen up so you only see the plasma ball, the oscilloscope, and the meter. And the reason why I want to do that is because you get a much better visual. And move things around a little bit. Okay, we can see everything. And now I'm going to turn off the light. And you can see the meter pretty well. I'm going to turn the meter on. And you can see the meter deflecting. And when I put my hand on the plasma ball, I am creating, like an, I'm, I'm making my body in an antenna, and I'm intensifying in the direction of the sensor the uh, electric field that the plasma ball is generating. All right, the next thing I'd like to do is show you the frequency range of the plasma, and you'll also see the effects. This is what Royal Raymond Reif did. He created an electric field by using a plasma that he generated in what he called his beam ray tube. Uh, this is not a beam ray. This is a plasma ball generating the exact same field effect that he was generating with his beam ray tube. All right, so let's uh, turn up the frequency. The reason why I want the meter here, I want, to, I want you to see how the, I just turned it off, I'll turn it back on. You can see the spikes on the screen here. If I stop the spooky momentarily, you'll see the square wave go away, you'll see the meter turn go down to zero, and you'll see no spikes on the lower. There's nothing being received. No electric field is being generated. Just turned it back on. All right, so we're at 200 kilohertz. Not kilohertz, excuse me. We're at 200 hertz, and I'm going to start dialing it up. Channel 1, frequency, and I just dialed it up to 1,001 kilohertz. Now you can see things a lot better. You probably can see the plasma ball streaming now a lot, lot better. Absolutely. You can see I'm absolutely pegging my meter, the tri-field meter. And if I put my hand in the way, I can interrupt that electric field. And if you're looking at the meter, you can see the meter deflect as I put my hand in there, in between the meter and the plasma ball. We're about eight inches away from the um, meter right now. And we're not aimed at the plasma ball. We're sort of skewed off on an angle. So if I aimed it right at the plasma ball, it would just peg the meter. And it's pegging the meter anyway when I get my hand out of the way. All right, and I'm going to start uh, demonstrating the rest of the frequency range. And you can notice the plasma start to really start to scream. And right now I'm up to uh, 33, uh, 3,300 hertz, 3.3 kilohertz. You can see the spikes on the screen correspond, correspond the spikes on the lower screen, or part of the screen, channel 2, correspond to the pulses being generated. So this plasma is turning on and off at the same frequency that is being displayed in the upper channel of this oscilloscope, and it happens to be right now 3.3 kilohertz. And I'm going to turn off my meter, 
not because you need to see it anymore. You know that it's going to peg, you know, especially when it's that uh, strong. Um, I just don't want to break it. Uh, that's a pretty strong electric field uh, that's being generated in this whole area here. Let's continue on up. I'm just going to keep dialing. And you can probably see some nice ringing on the plasma ball. Um, can be very effective in performing the tasks that you're going after. I'm right now at 8.8 .8 kilohertz. And we're starting to get that ringing is turning into multiple harmonics. They'll come and go, those harmonics, depending on what frequency you're actually working with. You can see that right now I have some secondary harmonics uh, that are about half the, uh, maybe a little bit less than half of the primary pulse. And you can see the plasma ball just screaming away right now. I'll turn the meter back on and, and it's just pegged. It sure can. I can still intercept the. Um, I can still intercept the field. So I'm going to turn this off because it's just slamming. It's just slamming that needle. So when I intercept the field, I am absorbing the electric field that the plasma is generating, and right now it's generating it at 13.1 kilohertz. And you can see the intensity vary on the oscilloscope also as I get my hand in the way. So I'm sucking up the electric field that's being generated by the plasma ball. And I've done some tests and uh, it will radiate at a distance of about three feet. It certainly gets weaker. Um, it will certainly generate a field completely through a human body, an animal body, small animal, <laughs> not something as big as a cow. All right, continuing on up. And as I dial up, you can see that the plasma has uh, a slightly different uh, effect or visual. And right now I'm at 26.7, I'm at 26. Uh, 0.7 kilohertz and the plasma is just still streaming away and if I turn the meter back on of course I'm pegging the meter and I can intercept the I can intercept the field by putting my hand in the wall and it's just overwhelming that meter so I'm turning the meter off again and I'm going to go all the way up now to max range and it's somewhere between 35 and 40 uh, kilohertz that it starts to fall off. I'm at 35 now, and I still have a nice plasma display. And I'm getting one electric field uh, cycle, uh, very little harmonic for one pulse coming from the function generator. Going on up to 40, and you can see the Birkeland currents. By the way, that's what these streamers are called. They're called Birkeland currents. And I'm right now at 40 even. And just as I hit 40, the plasma ball turned into just a low glow. It is still generating an electric field, and it's pegging my meter, and if I put my in fact, it's pegging my meter so badly, <laughs> I, I can't even intercept it. It's just radiating. Wow. I'm going to try to block this. There we go. I can, if I suck the energy away into my body, you can see that meter deflecting. I'm going to turn the meter off. Again, to spare the meter, save the meter. The point I'd like to make here is, is that the plasma, although it's not visually streaming, is still being turned on and off. And at this point, it's being turned off at the rate of 40 kilohertz, 40,000 cycles per second. And it's radiating quite an electric field, quite a very intense, large electric field. 
So that is it for this presentation. The next presentation will be software. I'll demonstrate controlling the plasma ball with software. And um, uh, the final video will be taking a plasma ball apart to show you the modified uh, circuits and uh, help you build your own. All right, with that, uh, have yourself a fine day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.